Imagine you're studying a 14-year-old patient with a metabolic disorder. Upon your examination, you see that the patient is experiencing acute vision loss, fatigue, muscular deterioration and atrophy, and neurodegradation. You are perplexed as this patient's profile does not match up to a common disorder. How do you proceed in diagnosing this patient, and what additional tests would you order? This exact predicament was presented in a 1992 case study by Dr. Ramakers and his colleagues. They decided to perform a color metric screening alongside urine sampling. The results were intriguing. They found an increase in isovaleric acid, beta hydroxybutyrate, and propanoic acid in the urine. The color metric test showed that this patient had decreased in activity for the enzyme biotinidase as compared to a control. This led the doctors to conclude that the patient had a rare disorder known as multiple carboxylase deficiency, or MCD which is derived from a deficiency of biotinidase. Biotinidase is an enzyme involved in the biotin recycling pathway, but to understand its functionality, it's important to understand what biotin is. Biotin, also known as vitamin B7, is a molecule that is not readily synthesized in the body, but must be obtained from exogenous sources, such as egg yolk, liver, whole grain cereal, and certain vegetables. Upon ingestion, biotin may be absorbed into the bloodstream in the forms of biocytin and free biotin, and these will then enter target cells for use. Once biotin is inside the target cells, it will bind as a cofactor to a lysine residue on inactive carboxylases, called apocarboxylases. Upon this binding, the carboxylase will become activated, and activated carboxylases are known as holocarboxylases. These are critical members of vital metabolic pathways, so their non-function can lead to a variety of complications, much like we saw in our case study. The activation of carboxylases is part of a larger pathway known as the biotin recycling pathway. After the holocarboxylases serve their function in their respective pathways, they will be degraded and release biocytin, which is a lysine-bound form of biotin. Biocytin itself is a non-functional form of biotin. It must be converted back into free biotin in order for apocarboxylase activation to continue at a homostatic pace. This conversion is catalyzed by biotinidase. After being released from lysine, the free biotin can now continue in the cycle to activate more carboxylases. Of course, this is what happens in people with normal metabolism. In those with multiple carboxylase deficiency, the biotinidase enzyme is mutated and cannot efficiently perform its function. As a result, there is an accumulation of biocytin and a lack of free biotin. Therefore, all the carboxylase pathways dependent on biotin activation will become dysfunctional. So how does this affect the important metabolic pathways that utilize carboxylases? Let's focus on four major biotin-dependent carboxylases. Acetyl-CoA carboxylase, propionyl coa carboxylase, remethylcrotonyl-CoA carboxylase, and pyruvate carboxylase. Let's walk through these one at a time. Acetyl-CoA carboxylase, or ACC, is involved in fatty acid synthesis, where acetyl-CoA in the cytosol will become carboxylated to form malonyl-CoA. Malonyl-CoA is a basic building block of fatty acids, and without it, fatty acid synthesis will be unable to occur. Fatty acids are essential components of myelin sheaths of nerves. Therefore, the lack of fatty acid synthesis may lead to neurodegradation. The insufficient myelin sheath production may result in impaired brain function due to slower neural transmission. This impairment may contribute to vision loss, which is another complication seen in the patient. Another enzyme, propionyl-CoA carboxylase, or PCC, is involved in beta-oxidation of fatty acids. This enzyme is found in the pathway where propionyl-CoA, generated from all chain fatty acids, eventually become succinyl-CoA. PCC specifically carboxylates propionyl-CoA into the intermediate s methylmalonyl coa Enzyme non-function prevents this catalyzation, resulting in accumulation of propionyl-CoA. Excess propionyl-CoA is seen in the urine of MCD patients in the form of propionic acid, as mentioned in the case study. Since odd chain fatty acids can't be broken down, the amount of usable fatty acids for energy is reduced. And as a result, since fatty acids are the preferred energy source of skeletal muscle at rest and the heart, the lack of fatty acids may lead to an increased reliance on protein metabolism. The amino acids derived from the breakdown of proteins are used to form ketone bodies, which is an alternative energy source. The shift to increased protein metabolism causes muscular deterioration, 
one of the symptoms seen earlier in the case study. Muscular atrophy occurs as a result of amino acids being diverted into metabolism for energy instead of building skeletal muscles. 3-methylcrotonicoa carboxylase, or MCC, catalyzes the conversion of 3-methylcrotonicoa into 3-methylglutaconicoa, which is part of leucine and isovaleric acid catabolism. High isovaleric acid levels are seen in the urine of the MCD patient in the case study. Within the pathway of leucine breakdown, there is the formation of acetyl-CoA and acetoacetate. As fatty acids are not being synthesized due to non-functional ACC, ketone bodies must be made to supply the brain and red blood cells with energy. However, non-functional MCC results in a lack of acetoacetate. Inadequate ketone body supply to the brain results in impairment of its functionality and delayed neurological development. Pyruvate carboxylase, or PC, catalyzes the carboxylation of pyruvate into oxaloacetate, which is involved in gluconeogenesis. Deficiency in PC results in the accumulation of pyruvate and lactate. Normally, pyruvate would be converted to acetyl-CoA by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, but once enough acetyl-CoA accumulates, it'll allosterically inhibit PDH and divert the remaining pyruvate to the gluconeogenic pathway through PC. This acetyl-CoA accumulation is further advanced by deficiency of active ACC, as mentioned earlier. The problem in a biotinidase deficient patient is that PC is non-functional, and this would result in excess pyruvate being forced to convert to lactate through the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. This excess lactate can cause lactic acidosis. This particular symptom was not present in the case study, However, lactic acidosis is commonly seen in MCD patients. Another symptom associated with MCD is muscle soreness and fatigue, which can be directly related to the accumulation of lactate caused by deficiencies in the aforementioned carboxylases. As you can see, multiple carboxylase deficiency results in serious irreversible neurological damage and symptoms that can progressively worsen if not treated immediately or promptly after symptoms appear. As of today, current treatment and alleviating symptoms associated with MCD is through the use of biotin supplementation. In the study of a 30-month-old girl with biotinidase deficiency, a urine organic profile was produced using mass spectrometry. The data showed high levels of lactic acids prior to biotin supplementation. After three days of 10 mg per day biotin supplementation, mass spectrometry results showed significant decrease in lactic acid levels. Continuous biotin administration improved the patient's motor and speech abilities. Another aspect within the study showed that irreversible neurological damage can be prevented if MCD patients were diagnosed early and treated with biotin supplementation. The effects of the cessation of biotin supplementation was seen in another study conducted by Baumgartner and colleagues, where control groups and biotinidase deficient patients were taken off supplementation for a number of days. Patients were seen to have significantly greater decline in biotin levels after cessation of supplementation as compared to the control groups. Treatment for MCD is still limited. From an advanced in scientific research, hopefully we have the technology in the future to diagnose MCD early postnatal and possibly correct the genetic defect of biotinidase through nautical gene editing methods. As you can see, the effects of multiple carboxylase deficiencies due to defects in biotinidase are severe. Although we only discussed four carboxylases, there are a multitude of other carboxylases affected by MCD. Because of this, the consequences of this hereditary genetic mutation is widespread in the body, affecting various bodily functions.